everybody. This is No Bullshit Gaming Podcast to Enough Gamers, session number 33. We are sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day -day user acquisition, game design, and ad monetization jobs. But we are also discussing latest news uh, from time to time while having so much fun. But let's not forget, this is 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe. Let's not take it too seriously. How about that? Good. Hello there. Yeah, Sounds yeah, great, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> and Maciej, yeah. what are we discussing today? I don't tell. I just want to, you know, I just want, no, we have, you know, I just want to say we have Felix here, Jakub here, and myself, Mati here, and we are going to discuss fake ads and fake core gameplays. Everybody is fake. All oh, everything is fake. Fake it till we make it. There you go. <laughs> Lots of people actually make it, it seems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, the article I posted about fake ads got super popular, but we are not going to talk about the whole article here because it's lame. We're going to talk about fake ads in general. And then Jakub made uh, an interesting uh, research about fake core gameplay. And of course, uh, Felix, you're going to tell us we are wrong, right? Yep. Is that true? Okay, perfect. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but it's not. What do you mean? We'll see. We'll see at the end. Wait, Manche, the Manche end. ask us ask us how we're doing. Ask us yeah. how we're doing. I, I want yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing, guys, this this week? Hey, hey Remo. Hey Remo. What? Do you think I look extra specially good today? You mean how do you think don't... I look? How do you think I look? Or should I don't say have COVID? I'm wearing my kimono <laughs> just for you. <laughs> really? Yeah, man. I know you love Japan and everything Japanese, so I thought you could love me today. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Rimo-san. That, that's like a, that's a proper Japanese, yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice, wow. Please um, take it next week to, to PGC. I would love to see. Depends. I, to see I mean, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Remo smile as much, so I might have to take it with me everywhere I see him. <laughs> yeah, well, you take the, uh, the kimono, he will take his glasses, I, I suppose. <laughs> What should, what should I take? I, well, I will make I will make myself a T-shirt with uh, UA diversification and uh, SMR slicing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Time to spin your sweaty spaghetti, boys. No, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, you didn't say, like, how are you? I'm, I'm oh, actually, okay. I'm really interesting to hear because <laughs> I'm doing fine. Man. Thanks for asking. Oh, how are you? Fine. As usual. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, you know, finish Dark Souls, which Elder Ring, we talk about that one. So looking at all the other things, currently I read that uh, Cyberpunk is being like uh, trending super high now after they announced that uh, another expansion and yeah, uh, an to... anime has been released by Netflix. Are you going Jap to play it Japanese? finally? <laughs> Mr. Japanese, yeah. are you playing to... Okay. Yeah, once, it, once it hits, the expansion next year, yeah. not, not now. Well, where but, is it but... coming live? Uh, next year they said <laughs> okay so we have uh yeah we'll see so 12 more months i guess <laughs> yeah but the, but the anime from netflix looks looks great like uh we'll probably watch that one really? of course you will yeah it's in, it's in japanese so it's a proper anime Ugh, of course <laughs> <laughs> so uh would you say um it's gonna make uh, as much money as dragon quest <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? The expansion of Cyberpunk? Well, maybe, or the anime. I have no idea. Oh, we'll see. Like, I, I'm really curious if they are able to kind of turn this ship around in a way that may, like, kind of get back the, like, the usual, like, premium honor they, they got before when they were, like, um, in the best times of Witcher. Uh, keep in mind that they already announced that they're doing Witcher 4 or whatever kind of a mm -hmm. new project that it's not like continuation of the trilogy, like a new Witcher project. Okay. So we'll see. But, uh, yeah. If you say we'll see uh, one more time, I'm gonna kill myself. But please, <laughs> let's not we'll see anymore. What if I can do we will theory observe. first? <laughs> okay, we'll observe. Observe. That's uh, that's good. Uh, ready for next week? PGC. Yep. Knocking like... on the door. Amazing. We need to upgrade your uh, your flight ticket, Mister Jakub. Yeah, I'll look into it. Ryanair has business class. <laughs> no, it's ah, Finnair, man. Uh. <laughs> no. No Going Ryan to Finland, what's the other? There's no other way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's from Vienna. No, no way, no way. All right, so, uh, so why do developers use fake ads? Your honest opinion. 
Um, yeah, I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm asking you, Mr. Harakiri. Uh, me, Harakiri? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Harakiri, Mr. Harakiri. Uh, basically, because you can get a broader appeal by lying in your creatives that your game is different than it actually is. So you can lower your CPI and thus get more users into your game for cheap. Mm, because you are able to make 100 million revenue with a five-year-old game that was making something to nothing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Interesting. Okay, so, uh, you know, misleading ads or fake ads work quite well from the, the research I've done and from what we actually can see around us, right? So it's it's not only... The Mighty Party um, case we mentioned, but also Playrix and uh, and others, and it quite helped uh, increase the revenues and uh, the user base for home scapes and that garden scapes. I guess so. so. They can bring a lot of money uh, to the developers' pocket. That's it. Uh, I mean, we could end the discussion here. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, but we can we can continue. So why is it happening? Uh, and we discussed this multiple times before. Uh, running and growing the game, it's not an easy job. And uh, scaling a game is even harder. Uh, so, you know, you can go back more, like a few episodes and uh, listen to us talking about scaling a game. You need to involve a lot of department departments into the, the scaling business. Uh, and it's not only, you know, as we discussed, it's not only on the marketing side. You need to work very closely with the, with the game team and analytics, and you know you have to have a live ops uh, ace in your sleeve as well. <laughs> so thanks to the fake C, fake uh, ads, you could potentially lower the CPIs quite heavily. And if um, if you are looking at your LTV versus CPI equation, what can you do? So on the marketing side. All the UA creatives, ASO tricks here and there, maybe like lowering down 10, 20% here and there. But that's not going to help you um, grow the game or scale the game or have uh, like five year old game make hundreds of millions. So if you are not able to increase the LTV, you need to do whatever it takes to lower down the CPIs, uh, you know, just below the LTV, obviously. And whatever it takes, which means whatever even using fake ads. So um, what do players say about fake ads? Well, I, I love it on my <laughs> from my end, but uh, most probably others don't like that too much, right? I would say there's like a expected hit on the review section when you start doing this. Like, <laughs> let's just be honest. Yeah. I would say last thing I was checking this, it was like, 20% of the negative reviews automatically turn into complaints about fake ads. That's like assured, basically. That's true. Especially if the game was not doing it before. Uh, which brings us also to that other point that why not everyone is doing it currently. Why not, let's say, Supercell is not doing it or IP games are not doing it. Because, of course, you don't want to tarnish your brand. That's like the yeah one of the biggest, uh, let's say, obstacles in order to run it because... You have an IP, so the IP drives down the, the CPI. You don't have an IP, and you don't have a portfolio of games making billions, like King or Supercell. So, billions. yeah, what, 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 what's left there for you to do? So, you know, oh, proper either, UA. What are you talking prop, about? What are you talking and if, about? if you hit the CPI ceiling, even with proper UA, like, do you think you can revive any game with like proper UA? Well, you can't revive any any game with the proper UA. It's just about the CPI LTV. That's it. So, so I mean, proper UA is just a different name for fake ads. <laughs> no, 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 no. Come on, come on. And I'm not like look. So even though I made this research, I'm not like uh, cheering up for fake ads. It's just uh, I don't. I just think it's very smart and a really interesting idea how to you know fake <laughs> fake it to remake it. <laughs> Because why not? I mean, look. So if you do, if you do, or think about it, um, you try to make money because this is still business. So if it's not, if you're not able to increase the LTV, so that what what you do? There is the other part of the equation, and you know, with different like UA uh, optics, tactics, and hacks and whatever, you can you know lower the CPI. But this is definitely quite different. No, yep. this is like super dramatic um, change of, uh, of creative strategy. Yep. 
What is your like kind of opinion also? So like with the rise of fake ads, you've also seen kind of the rise of this like disgusting things with like, yeah, misogyny, people hitting each other, like anti-women ad, like stuff like that. Like I get so many complaints about it, like, but that must work super well as well. Otherwise UA managers and creative people wouldn't be building these type of ads. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the thing because if we see these type of ads and they are well, we see that for quite a quite a long time already, it must work because uh, I mean it's just like disgusting. I can't. I mean, <laughs> most probably, I wouldn't run these type of things. Uh, at least I, I'm very glad I didn't have to yet in the in my career. So. But you know, it makes money, I guess. So that's that's the thing, and that's why you know you, you can block them on Facebook or on other UA channels for sure, yes. But then you will find a way how to run these ads on different ad networks, and then it falls into your. And then it becomes kills. yeah. Then it comes my problem, and <laughs> I have to yeah deal with it, and yeah, quite frankly, eat a lot of shit. Isn't this thing. like uh? Isn't this like you know? The whole social app ecosystem is wired around polarizing content and pushing polarizing content around because that, you know, catches eyeballs. It is, so. but this, these type of ads got like get quite banned immediately on Facebook because uh, it's against the rules and guidelines. And it's usually like very quickly that you can see that your ad got rejected actually. So hmm. you won't do that much uh, action on Facebook. Google, maybe. But it's also like very strict on ad networks. Mm. But but that was this was like a recent change, wasn't it? In a way that no. like I remember my Facebook feed being spammed with the Lava Guy pin creative. From but Lava Wars. Guy is not uh, you know Lava Guy is not misogyny and uh, you know like ah okay these, you mean like, misogyny you know, not fake yeah, ads yeah, per se yeah okay. not fake okay, ads okay. per se. Yeah. Facebook said multiple times in, in last year that they're gonna ban fake ads. But why would they? They make money on it, so it's like <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> It's not going to happen anytime soon. And then there's the other aspect of uh, CGI, 3D, totally different types of creatives, which is like super high quality, but it's also fake. I mean, do you remember like we had on the train station this like 3D changing train, which was absolutely yeah, amazing. Stuff like quality. Quarium does, for instance. Yeah, for, yeah, exactly. And, you know, players complain like, hey, this is not how the game looks like. But it's like, is it fake? Ad? Of course it is. But it's, you know, it's a different type of fake? Ad? No. It's, you know, comparing mm. apples to, to oranges, I guess. But still, players complain quite heavily, but they don't understand how UA and fake ads work. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> but okay, so like you said, Felix, at the beginning, think about this as a funnel. So you're acquiring a shit ton of new players with very low CPIs, uh, way lower than what you were able to get before with your, you know, regular gameplay related creatives. Well, what can you do? And like we see kind of a, a pattern here, which means like games with really high CPIs uh, in different genres use this tactic to lower down CPI. So usually it's forex, RPG games, fantasy oriented themes and Mid-core, stuff. Midcore, hardcore. Midcore, yep. hardcore, yeah. I mean, it was used as we discussed in uh, in casual games, in in uh, in playrix and uh, titles, but mostly and also, I mean, match free is also very high <laughs> high CPI <laughs> high CPI genre. Okay, so there you go. Nowadays already, yeah. Yeah. So, so this is this is how you how you can actually go about that and just try to lower the CPI pretty much, because what I used uh, in the past. You know, I can just bring the bring up the the train station example again. As soon as we we showed gameplay, the CPI was super high. As soon as we showed the the, the fake ad that I shared in the article, like, CPI was super low. Of course, retention dropped as well. But then, if you acquire one hundred players instead of like ten, you, your chance to to get players is way higher than <laughs> from the ten. And it, you know, then that's the the whole math behind the, the fake ads. That's it. So uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of easy. You just need to try again to think about the CPI versus LTV equation, and like why do you see high CPIs in these genres? Well, what affects the CPI? So it's genre, as we said. Um, then it's it's kind of monetization strategy. Ad monetized game uh, games have lower CPIs, hyper casual, and all these. Uh, then it's visual theme and uh, and obviously creatives. So. Uh, 
it depends on the combination of the genre and visual visual design how you can um, achieve different type uh, levels of CPI. So yeah, interesting uh, interesting fake ads uh, case study. I think uh, we are going to see these type of behaviors even more. And why is it important to mention fake ads? It's not only about fake ads as you know as creatives. To make it work, we need to have like an expectation flow or like seamless experience for players. So if you see fake in the creatives, you need to see fake in the stores and you need to see, see fake in the game gameplay. as well, <laughs> in the gameplay, <laughs> which is amazing transition to fake core gameplay. <laughs> Research by Mr. Jakub, game design Japanese master Remy. If you've built a mobile game for iOS or Android, you've experienced user churn. You can win those users back, but it's getting more and more expensive, even more so to acquire totally new users. Enter cross-promotion with Addictive. By identifying your users likely to churn early, you can showcase another game in your portfolio before they leave forever, transforming a lost user into a new user, increasing your revenues. Learn more now at Addictive.com. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I really hope you're going to talk about vectors and design systems in the fake um, core gameplay. No? Oh, okay. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> I think this is, this is it. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me get this straight. Um, so I would say this is this is like a evolving trend currently, as same as it was done with the creatives themselves. Yeah. Like, if, if if we could put it as a subcategory, fake ads is basically a subcategory of a creative strategy. In the end, it's not that, like like you said, like you can yeah. have the high uh, high value, high production player X ones, which are still like fake ads basically, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. and then you can have your hyper casual pin lava guy, whatever misogynistic gameplay that that's yeah. like yeah, that's been used. Um, what happened throughout the years? Uh, some games look at the others and i guess like one of the most used tactics is pretty much to kind of see what competition is doing and improve op- upon it like plus one the usual one yeah mm-hmm. because you cannot really kind of create something out of nothing if something is working and been proven by millions of spent and uh, revenue dollars <laughs> by the other games <laughs> so uh as i look through it uh i see like few types or examples or evolutions of these and let's let's basically go through like let's say three types that goes from the lowest or let's say the crudest example of pretty much duct taping it into it and then to very very smooth and i would say like pretty much evolution of the whole thing so uh, let's start with hero wars because hero wars is like a one yeah, of the yeah, first yeah. ones that that actually started doing this, or as, let's say maybe even Gardenscape started sooner. Don't know. Like need to would need to research that based on some kind of old builds of the games. But let's keep with the high LTV games because we want to talk about midcore. For sure, it was mid-core. first. It was first Playrix because they stole that from Matchington Mansion, mm-hmm. yeah, and then they applied this for Hero Wars when they bought for the their company. whole portfolio. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There you yeah. Go. yeah. So let's just take Hero Wars for this example. So. What the Hero Wars started is that uh, really, really famous or I would say infamous creative where you have the guy, there's some kind of physics-based puzzle, you pull pins out and then he dies in like a horrible death of lava or something like that. And then it fails and then you need to click on it and install the game. So what happens there is that uh, they, on top of it, of course, they change the screenshots of the game in the store. That's really important to keep the illusion. Uh, Illusion. (laughs) I love it. But what they did is that they also put the playable creatives into the actual gameplay. So if you would open Hero Wars currently, or uh, say I was looking into it, uh, right after the first level, no, no, not even before starting the first level, they have it as the first See, thing. It's they... a tutorial in the like before in the game right away. Yeah, like you open up because... an app and then then you have the. Yeah. the it goes directly experience. into that uh, playable, and that playable is again like that nice physics-based puzzle, which you can actually fail and you can either retry it or skip it that that's important yeah. but it's i would say pretty satisfying to even play with it a little bit to like see the interaction and all the possible horrible deaths but anyway it's there and then right afterwards normal gameplay catches up with the normal tutorial and after the first level where there's normal 
basic gameplay. You complete one level, get rewards, stuff like that. Then again, another fake uh, creative is put into the gameplay. Uh, again, a little bit more complex. You can play with it. You don't have to. You can skip it. And then a uh, game takes over and takes you to my menu and pretty much tutorial continues. Uh, the thing is that if you even re read the reviews or the comments on, on the game, people are actually expecting that these puzzles are normal flow of the game and they would be somewhere there also later in the game. But of course, they're not. Like, so these are just... The like... Yeah, yeah. That's just part of the tutorial. Uh, afterwards, after you like go through these two creatives, you don't see it anywhere else. But the hope remains, that it's, hope. and you continue playing, and 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 that's that's the whole point of it. Like if you can just you know force so many more people to continue and push them to the funnel, you're already pretty much golden because you know maybe they bought something in the meantime, maybe they watch some ads, maybe you know yeah. they remain for the next day. So I think this is, but. It's really good, but it's still pretty basic because even if you look at the creative and, and the whole flow, like, I mean, the playable creative, it seems that it doesn't fit the game. Like, a little different graphic, the style. A little different a... graphic, dude. It's, like, super super different graphics. It's usually uh, hyper-casual. The character is pretty much the same, man. Like, okay, the character. Okay, in Hero yeah. Wars, the character is the same, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But, but, but let's continue. So another example comes in. Uh, let's take uh, Mighty Party. Yeah, that's which my is, favorite. It's my favorite. <laughs> which is a game that starts uh, the formula a little bit different. So what they do, uh, they start with a little bit of a story segment, seems pretty high production value, nice graphics, and then you are thrown into their uh, turn-based RPG gameplay, a very, very short battle. But immediately afterwards, you get uh, that favorite tower number creative, where you need to defeat opponents based on their numbers on top of their heads and you can go against so the fake, higher fake one. fake creative immediately. Yeah, fake creative yeah. comes in. Uh, the important thing here, what they improved compared to Hero Wars, is if you win or lose, it's not some kind of a random like ad-based playable UI. It's the game UI. If you yeah. actually win, you get the same chest ritual, the same UI flow as you would get from a normal battle. If you lose, again, same UI flow, same same, pretty much everything in a way that it seems that it's seamless. This is part of the game and this is normal. Uh, afterwards, the game goes again into one more battle, the normal one, you win it, and then one more, more complex creative playable ad. But you again win, you can skip or retry if you want, and then the game tutorial takes in and takes you to the town. Uh, this, again, seems much more seamless, much more polished, and again, the hope remains that these things will somewhere show, be shown later. And uh, oh, players continue playing remains. pretty much. Uh, but that's that's it, man. Like, just read the comments on Reddit or anywhere else, and yeah. people are, like, literally complaining, like, I've played this for months and there were no more puzzles. Oh, really? Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> literally okay, like that. Oh, that's so, amazing. I mean, look, that's that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, of course. Just, that's, just, a hook, you know, that's that's a hook right there. But but that that's the whole thing with like you know gacha systems and uh, operational conditioning, where yeah, okay. the thing that works the best is the one where you hope that it drops, where it's not linear, where you know like <laughs> if you click it, it doesn't drop. There's a chance it could drop, yeah. and this is the same that maybe somewhere there later down the line there could be another puzzle and I want to play it but it's not <laughs> yeah okay. so uh yeah. the interest That's the other genius. interesting part <laughs> about this is that the game was soft launch in June 2017 and if yeah. you look at the charts Damn. uh yeah <laughs> this kind of old already and if you look at the charts in first two years uh the game didn't really stand out. It was making something like 200k a month, 500k a month, a little bit later, then scale up a little bit to something like 1 million. Uh, but only by July 2021 last year, uh, it was pretty much supercharged, where it first quadrupled its daily downloads and then... Uh, 20 times fold, or how do you say it? <laughs> Increase it by 20 times, pretty much yeah. from... 500k or like a 80 high, 80k it was before and now it was like 4.5 million for J july 2021 where the game pretty much got something like 8 million a month 
And it's the, still the same game. There were no some kind of dramatic changes in the product, like we know where games do turnarounds that we know that are possible. For instance, Adventure Communist, if you want to look up that one, like the game looked completely different when the game was first global launch and they changed it and now it makes like much more money, but there was like drastic changes in the meta game and gameplay. This game was pretty much the same in the end. So Yep. So what did they change? So so what did they change? Yeah, that's that's the question. Oh. <laughs> You can read my article if you want. Uh, <laughs> but but on the downside of it, it doesn't seem that this is like a stable stable trend as we see the numbers there, because uh, yeah, it's, it's not sustainable, man. It's yeah, just it's not sustainable. Sustainable. still a good thing, right? Like uh, yeah, like a hundred yeah. million shark fin is really a good thing. I cannot it's, argue against yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, even if it's if it's a short term uh, game. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, if it's a short-term game and you know you you breaks out and like the UA is positive, it's great. If it works for some time, but you know it can find your next game, whatever you want to do with the money. Yeah, exactly. Go yeah. to Bahamas and stuff, and you know buy a yacht. <laughs> do some uh, tax avoidance. Is that what you're saying, yeah. in Bahamas? <laughs> <laughs> Are you in the you Bahamas? Don't say anything. <laughs> yeah, don't you see the <laughs> the wall behind him? Yeah, that's, yeah. There's a palm tree there. Yeah. I see a palm yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah. Looks like Bahamas. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, so tax this was dodging a... old sailor you I knew you were doing something <laughs> <laughs> this was a better example of duct taping the creative into the gameplay but let's, let's, let's continue into the third example which I think is the genius one uh, when you actually create fake core gameplay this is the let's say money yeah, exactly oh, damn, like, I'm, let, let me just coin great this segment for now. I'm actually enjoying Fa this so much fake core gameplay <laughs> because this is actually what is happening. So yeah. let's let's pick uh, Kingdom uh, Guard mm -hmm. for for this example. There's also Top War that we could talk about, but I'm I'm liking this like I'm liking this. Yeah, let's, this let's one much do more. Kingdom Guard. They they yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, target me so much with their fake ads, and I know like uh, they are not anywhere close to the gameplay. Yeah, exactly. So Kingdom Guard uh, the new game or let's say recent game it was uh, going to launch 2021 so last year uh is a uh, one second again. one second one second one second felix do you see this resurrected guy after he got covid he's completely changed man <laughs> i think it's the glasses like they were oh, weighing him down glasses, and then right. now without the glasses he's on suddenly everything fire. he says yeah. it's 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 super interesting he's so good <laughs> <laughs> Don't interrupt him. I want to get back. This is oh, actually yeah, sorry, good. Yeah, yeah, okay. uh, anyway, let, let's get back to the thing. So <laughs> you start with a very, very simple gameplay. The only thing you can basically do is merge stuff. Uh, actually, if you look at it, the, the whole layout and, and the basic concept in the first two minutes looks like merge planes, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Because okay. you, you can just merge the merge game back in days. It was like <laughs> yeah, it exactly. exploded immediately. Yeah, so you merge uh, your towers on top of each other and then put them on the slots on the road and like units come and there's like a basic the classic tower, ta defense, tower yeah. defense game yeah. with the merge spin. Uh, if you need more tokens, you train them for money, you again merge them and this kind of continues. Seems kind of easy. What could there be? Like nice tower defense merge game. Wrong. <laughs> this, is, this is something completely there is a twist. different. There is a twist <laughs> in, exactly. your, in your face. So, so suddenly, when you continue this, uh, some things change, meaning that more slots unlock, more tokens unlock, more units unlock. And then suddenly the game offers the auto-merging option, which is uh, a later monetized with ads and even premium purchase, where the game for premium would even put the units on the towers for you. Ooh. So you don't even <laughs> need to now not only merge them, but you don't even need to actually place them on the towers. Games does everything for you. Nice. It sounds very interesting. <laughs> sounds yeah. like AFK Arena. <laughs> So, or something no, no, like that. You, you still need to push the button. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Spawning new units. Okay, okay. And they auto merge themselves, but you still need to push that nice. one button. But basically, what has happened that after 20 minutes of you nicely playing this tower defense game with merging and everything, they pretty much took out all of the like needed attention and everything. And it's just reduced to clicking one button and the whole thing plays itself. So what we, what are you then doing within the whole game? So now's the time to introduce Forex. So, Yo. this is the part where our famous okay. 
<laughs> very, very good uh, March battle map comes in and introduces all of the nice forex mechanics where you have your town, you have your protection shield for some time in the beginning. Wait a second. You so... can send your units to march against other players or other units and then join an alliance. And then you're joining an alliance, moving your town hall into the nest of the alliance, battling okay. with other players, and so on and so forth. Okay, so Kingdom Guard is actually a forex game. Exactly. Okay, I th look. So this guy's at a tower defense I have, game. Yeah. I haven't played it yet. They are targeting me all the time. It looks in like from the creative perspective, it looks absolutely non forex game at all. <laughs> at all. I didn't even this I is, didn't even play. This is the trend. Like keep in mind that before, uh during the days of the glory days of Machine Zone, all the Forex game would start with that never-ending tutorial that upgrade yeah. this, upgrade that, upgrade this, send this, send that with a girl or Kate Upton or whoever yeah. was there was or Arnold oh, Schwarzenegger Arnold Schwarzen telling you. Yeah, Arnold. Yeah. These days are gone. Now what we do, we build a completely different game <laughs> under the, the main game. And yeah. at some point we get rid of it or so pretty much meet minimize it to the nothing because the interaction that you were learning you pretty much you can forget it you don't need it anymore and now comes the real part where you need to kind of play the forex game this is even better than ads uh ants the, the underground yeah. kingdom that we discussed uh, uh so previously yeah, exactly. you hide you hide like you hide your like tutorial behind like something low cpi that gets yeah. people in and then you funnel them into a forex game that has a higher like ltv it's but like, this I makes a lot of sense because yeah. a lot of a lot of companies, or well, not a lot of companies, but um, if you have a portfolio of games, what you were yeah. doing, just buying traffic to the the low CPI games and then just cross promote them to to your different games where you have like no, oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. This in, in theory, well. <laughs> in theory, in theory, in theory, but then like it, it would is... work for King. Sure, of course. Okay, okay. Still, still, like in theory, this works quite well. Okay, and then um, this is even better. I mean, because you just buy the traffic to very low, well, lower CPI than Forex. Everything is lower CPI than Forex, I guess. Mm. <laughs> and, I don't know about Casino. Yeah, Social Casino is probably the only one, yeah. Yeah, okay, there you go. Like next 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 year, there will be a hyper-casual funneling to Social Casino that I, I would kill myself on. <laughs> it would be amazing. Yeah, I can okay. already see the Coin Master Pig doing like hyper casual things. <laughs> and they were already doing the ASMR slicing of the coins. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh, okay. um, this works pretty well. Um, as I said, the whole connection now within the tower defense game is now just like uh it unfolds features for you. So if yeah. let's say I, I wanted to try to send two heroes, which are not able to do anything with the tower defense. Oh, they are there, like standing and shooting. But in the end, you want to send them to like mar March map within the forex part. Uh, you need to progress the levels on the yeah. stages on the kind of a thing. But just notice the gold. Like this is the the best kind of thing to give. Like I think the illusion breaks in this part, and they still need to work on this because. From the beginning, you were, they were pretty stingy on gold, and like the towers were kind of expensive. You know, you need to learn it. You can really overwhelm you and stuff like that. So one spawn of the tokens cost five gold, and you had like twenty gold, thirty gold, stuff like that. But in fifteen minutes, you have hundred and fifty k immediately gold. Okay. <laughs> because you need that for those forex upgrades. <laughs> so if if you end up spawning, the, still it still costs five gold to spawn those tokens, and you have now hundred and fifty k gold. Jakub, 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 <laughs> look, you are the game designer. You can you know see through all of this. I wouldn't even you know notice these type of no, things. No, me neither. Do you think no, like regular players knows cycle. like? Yeah. Oh well, yeah, now I have yeah, one hundred fifty. Of course. No, it's it's, uh, it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like it, it's really brilliant. And the important part is that uh, compared to something like uh, Mighty Party, if you look at the charts, there's a hockey stick upwards. There's yeah. not like some kind of a, you know, current temporary trend of this spiking up and then going down. But there's a you know why? hockey stick upwards. Because hmm? for, my Kingdom Guard is 4X and usually 4X have also like higher LTVs than Mighty Party, which is... An RPG. Yeah. RPG, yeah. There you go. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's, that's why. That could be one of the things, of course. And, and of also, course, Kingdom this, Guard is new and yeah, like the polish yeah, of the that game and like, you know, everything. Like now you did this kind of a proper 
proper transition from fake core gameplay into the forex, which also yeah. top four does, by the way. It's yeah. not like limited to it. And also, there is this X Hero um, RPG? case as well. Uh, yeah. It's it's RPG battler, whatever it's, it is. And they they one level it's the RPG battle, which like very hardcore graphics. And then the the next save level, the dog. next <laughs> next level, puzzle. save the dog, hyper casual. <laughs> completely unrelated to the gameplay and it's like also like very different visual style you mm. beat that level you progress to the next next level and that's again super hardcore rpg battle and then you know like they switch between these levels it's hyper casual hardcore hyper casual hardcore and they, that's that's how you progress in the in the game yeah, yeah like like what i would take out of this is that it could be really heading towards this kind of direction that next year or in like a few years we could see that this would be like a standard thing of your tutorial. The tutorials pretty much will be fake, yeah. fake core gameplay, hyper casual thing. And there will be no way around it in a way because Love the CPI it. will rise so high. Yeah. Love it because, you know, I've, I've been talking about like hyper casual um, concepts into your creative strategy for yeah. a year almost. And it's happening. And this is yeah. even better. This is even yeah. better because, you know, now you're hyper casualizing your tutorial basically. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's brilliant. Your fatui is just changing to get cheaper. I, I love it. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> oh. It's, it's yeah. a perfect money printer. <laughs> Let's just say it yeah. like that. <laughs> perfect delu- illusion. Ooh. Yeah, like it, it, and and this is like yeah, this is the best thing of that kind of a third example that they don't really break the illusion that there's some kind of you know because yeah. the gameplay still goes on like the tower defense everything I can imagine that it goes into like level like ludicrous like. 1000 yeah. or something and it's still mm-hmm. there and it greets you when you start the game so you can still kind of if you enjoy it and you can still go and enjoy some dopamine for that hyper casual you know mm-hmm. auto merging and stuff like that in the okay. meantime when the timers on the forex are running that, that's that's perfect <laughs> <laughs> oh this is so great this is going to be a trend of 2023 100 percent. yeah yeah okay uh off to you mr Blondie. Blondie. <laughs> Blondie son. Blondie son. Blondie son. <laughs> All right. So we were talking about fake ads. Remo, you had this great insight, but I just wanted to shift gears a bit and just start off by asking, what do you guys think is the biggest predictor of like good creative performance? Well, the, the emotions that are uh, always attached to the, to the creative. IPM <laughs> oh, <All right>. numbers. <laughs> there you go. So, like, I have a I have a bit of a different take <laughs> than both of you. Okay. So I'm gonna go on a bit of a three minute rant, and you're both are gonna get very triggered. So let's just hold off the argument oh, until ev- after. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. So basically, like the one thing that you guys like, there's an old lady, like agents like learned saying that says shit only flows downstream, right? And in the case of creatives it's very applicable right so everything that Mache makes in terms of creatives and ultimately puts in front of the users like through his ua campaigns and other games flows downstream through a massive filter that you're not taking into account right and that filter has a much bigger impact on click-through rate install rate than any creative content ever will as an average yeah. And that is the end cards. And in particular, the end cards that n- ad networks superimpose at the end of every video credit, you know, like video creative that is shown on their UA like network. So this is not something that you control as a UA person's networks control this. No, oh, some... well, 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 well. dude, I put the end cards on Unity on Apple in every time. Yeah. But are those the end cards that the user sees? No. Right? Okay. They're different. The end cards that you see. Let me get on to it. You'll, you'll All see. Right, All right. right. Yeah, let me get on. Like, I'm like, Trigger don't let me. Start. Yeah, no, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where I'm trying to go with this is I'm going to start off here by giving you guys a little admon history lesson. Last summer, Iron Source started rolling out a new video end card on their whole ad network with a three-click template that replaced the old traditional one, one-click template end card. So basically, the end card template looked like this. At the end of a 30-second rewarded video, you press skip up in the corner. You then had to wait three seconds where an App Store page dragged up from the bottom. 
Then after two seconds, you could skip that and the ad closed, right? So that is the end card that they superimpose. That's not what you put in as a UA yeah. manager. Yeah, right? You mean like the, the, the template? At exactly, the at the end. Yeah. That mm -hmm. has always at the end of every end card. So yeah. I don't know what the impact was the Iron, Soul, Iron Source saw to their CTR and IR metrics. And that's how they get paid ultimately, right? But I do know that within 10 days, which is very quick, App Loving yeah. had rolled out exactly the same <laughs> end card format across their whole network. Oh, so that's suspicious. this leads me to think <laughs> that the impact was very large. Yeah. Why do I know this? Because I had to deal with user complaints on why this 30 second ads were now 35 seconds yeah, and why it's harder to click out of the ads and accidentally click through in the ads. So that was last summer. Where are we now? Right now, app loving end cards have two end templates, a two clicks template. I think they call it the two EC and a mm -hmm. three click template called the three EC. So the default right now on app loving looks like it's a, you finish your 30 second rewarded video, uh, then basically a five second video that you then watch at the end card, then a three second pop up that comes up from the app store where yeah. you can download. Then after that, you click through it. There's a two second end card screen then again with a store that comes up like as a banner at the bottom where you can press a get button that downloads the game automatically from the ad. So you don't even take into the app store anymore. So what's the impact? What's been like the impact on these end cards on CTR and install rates? I wish I knew. I've asked Iron Source and App Loving, but you know, they're public institutions. So, you know, they can't or won't tell me but I would love to know. But if you think about it, what they've done with these end cards is they've increased by two or three X the chances of people clicking on their ads. And of that's course. massive. Yeah. So if you're thinking this it's is also a, annoying as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was getting to that now. Like, so if you're thinking this has a like impact on like publisher games retentions, you're very right. I, a couple of months ago asked app loving to remove this due to the retention issues in the games i was mediating on max mm. but after a couple of weeks i saw a degradation of ecpm in those games where i removed the end card yeah. as we know mm. ecpm is a mix of historic performance like of the ads in your games basically algorithms take into account install rate click-through rate number of unique users in your games over the last seven days and then comes out with a number so it would make sense that if you're getting less click-throughs or installs because of the like l more inferior end cards, that the ECPM would drop and then basically mm -hmm. have a negative impact on the install metrics. So in reality, like micro and macro factors play a big part in CPM, but I'm about to run some tests in like one game that basically I'm taking back the aggressive end cards because App Loving didn't have the feature to do it like on one game. It was like account wide. Yeah. So I'll know probably by the end of this quarter exactly how big of an ECPM impact those end cards have. But I just wanted to open your guys' eyes and like, Ooh. yeah, basically to summarize, like my opinion is like, you don't need to have the best creatives. Your creatives just need to be good enough. Then the ad networks, AKA the true gatekeepers of our industry or the godfathers, like their end cards will take care of the rest. Then it's up to Remo and game design to create a good enough Fatui to not have users churn after the first app open, which really fits into what Remo was saying. So I'm just saying mm, they have so much more power than you actually think. How do you think that now fake ads are even more supercharged because of this change? Exactly. Like better yeah. a, 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 and what, what, what was the date of this? So last summer was when Iron Source first, not this summer, but the summer before. That's when they rolled it out. Uh huh. This okay. new click mm. template. No, no, like the, 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 the mighty party example we were talking was like the, the best period was somewhere that it was like uh, Ju July 2021. No, yeah, the July the peak. 21 was, was the peak. Yes, that's yeah. true. It, it was the the 7 million they made in July and August. August was the, the best where they made 7 million. Which is not bad. <sighs> But the yeah, thing but is, they they started the the like kind of yeah, supercharging the, the UA in, March, in yeah. October 2020. Yeah, exactly, and then uh, increased over time. So uh, okay, well the thing is, it's only applicable to ad networks. 
uh, is this rolled out to Unity as well? I have no idea. The thing is, yeah, Unity has like longer end cards now as well. But the thing is, app loving now, I would say, probably is a bigger ad network than Facebook on mobile. Like they've definitely taken number two position. AdMob is probably still number one, but I would say now app loving is number two. So, okay. you know, when you say ad networks, yeah, but they're the second biggest. Okay, now it all makes sense. And all makes sense. I mean, I was looking into X, X Hero, uh, UA diversification, obviously. And now the UA yeah, what else would mix, you look into? Yeah. Of course, the UA <laughs> channel mix and uh, the second biggest UA channel was Uploading. So, yeah, I guess uh, there might, you might be onto something. Yeah, let's see if I get sued for this. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> you definitely yeah. know I'm onto something. By, by the Godfathers? <laughs> by the Godfathers. Yeah. Shouldn't they said like a horse head or something before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> F- cut off fingers or something. Yeah, yeah. Or hand. Okay. But anyway, so I just wanted to like to wrap this up before we finish the episode. Uh, my friends at Bungle actually shared some data with me that they allowed me to share in our Pocket Gamer uh, Helsinki talk that we're doing at what nine a.m. on Tuesday morning. Nine forty. Nine forty. Nine forty on Tuesday morning, and basically they shared some data on actually the impact on ERCPM. So that's ex- effective revenue per melee. That's the, the basically the metric that you use to take ECPM and fill into account the money. Mm-hmm. So basically, from a one-second end card close button delay, that adds 57% to the, your effective RPM. A 14-second e, like end card close button adds up to 188% of effective RPM increases. So you see, so the longer the end card, the more yeah. money you earn because people click through it more often. Okay. Isn't it because uh, they want to close it, but then, uh, you know, they end up in the store? That's what a cynic would say, right? But I'm uh, just saying, like... <laughs> that's what the like, realist uh, But I'm just say. saying, like, as an average, like, the thing that impacts yeah. creative performance the most is the godfathers. It's, the re- like, the end cards. Yeah, like, yeah, The things yeah. that they impact, not what you put in the creative. Mm. On average, I'm thinking... I'm talking averages here. Yeah, of course, of course. But then, uh, then you have... Uh, different UA mixes and then the, the Uplove in Unity and Iron Source is not that big and uh, would be great to have this uh, data for Google as well if they do something like this but I'm not sure as well yeah. and then let's, maybe let's try to get someone from Iron Source and Uploving on the podcast we can just ask them I would love to know like it would yeah. be a really interesting discussion yeah I'm in the, in the talks with Iron Source actually to be on their po- level up pod and uh, we wanted to do a swappy afterwards so that we will definitely you know I've talked to Uploving as well there, there's rumors of having one person on so I'm just hoping to get it cleared nice All right. Well, yeah. let's see mm-hmm. you can ask cool. nobody will answer <laughs> <laughs> There you go. And with that, I think uh, that's it for today, right? Have a good weekend. Yeah, yep. thank you. See you at PGC. See you next week. Thank you. Bye bye.